So we're looking at a uh, Fluke 1900A. This unit is uh, approximately 23 years old, I believe. Um, but it is in remarkable brand new shape. I mean, it's there isn't a scratch on the lens, on the body of the meter. No significant dirt, just a little bit of dust. The original calibration stickers are on here from the plant. This one's dated, uh, it's from the Fluke Instrument Corporation, dated April 1st, 1990, was calibrated. It's got the serial number on it. Has the uh, Fluke calibration sticker still on the, uh, on the unit, as it does on the rear. The Fluke, over the screw of the rear, is the Fluke calibration sticker. So, I don't really believe that this thing has had any significant use, if any. And uh, I believe it's really in about the same shape as it was when it got here from the factory. Uh, and to prove that right now, let's give a good look at the underside. You can still see the patina on the plastic. It's shiny. Very new. This thing's brand new. It's beautiful. But the source has not achieved lock yet. We're still uh, getting the red light. But as soon as it goes green, we'll know that we have... 10 megahertz exactly coming into this meter and we're very close already but uh, we'll wait to see just uh, how close the uh, the unit's calibration is we are right now uh, pumping a signal in from this 10 megahertz rubidium uh, frequency source and uh, we've achieved lock that's what the green lights are about and uh, that means that we are feeding in a signal that's 10 megahertz to something like eight decimal places. And on our, we are right now on the, um, and we'll put it on auto. And we are, we are reading 10.0001, give or take a occasional count, but it's one megahertz. So 10 megahertz. Uh, to the least significant digit. So the calibration is still very good on this unit. Remarkable for uh, for having set around. Uh, knowing though that we are able to read 10 megahertz that accurately, we're going to go ahead and make the assumption that we can read other frequencies accurately. And we're going to go in and run it through some tests using a uh, PTS 500 frequency source. We're going to start at 99, 99.999. All right. So we are right up next to 100 megahertz and reading it. And on our uh, on our PTS right now, we are reading 99.999 megahertz and that's what we're getting pretty good for that generator too now let's go ahead and take it down to 89 let's uh, and let's make it an even 80 we'll take all these to zero all right we're at 80 the last few counts I'm gonna attribute to my generator which is a remarkable output for the generator actually Okay, there's 80 megahertz, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. There's 9 megahertz, 8, 7. Switch to kilohertz now, we're reading 7,000.09 kilohertz, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one. All right. Now we are uh, nine hundred thousand kilohertz. Eight hundred. Seven hundred. Six hundred. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. All right. Now at this point, I need to switch generators. The low limit of this PTS 500 
is uh, supposed to be about a megahertz. I know it goes down to 300 kilohertz. Below that it gets flaky. So we're going to switch now from this PTS. We're going to switch to this Hewlett Packard 3320B. And we'll pick up from that 300 kilohertz point. Alright, there's 300 kilohertz. 200. 100. Okay. 90. 80. 70. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, alright, there's 9 kilohertz, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Nine hundred hertz. Now let's. Uh, well, we're still on auto, so we are. We should automatically be switching. All right. Let's see what it does. Eight hundred. Seven hundred. Six hundred. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred hertz. Two hundred hertz. 100 hertz. Now I am going to go ahead and kick this thing up all the way to its maximum resolution. Now this is a uh, a 10 second gate time. So using 10 second averages, we right now are getting 100.0 hertz. Okay. There's 90. Moment. It takes 10 seconds to get this gate. This next one will be the money count. There we go. Alright, I'm going to switch to 80. Now I'm only going to, it's only going to get a partial count. And then the second count will capture it all. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and back off on the resolution. That'll speed the whole process up until we get down to the extremely low. So let's, we're at 80, here's 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, Let's go ahead and kick it up again. Alright, there's a count of 10.0. Alright. Now we're going to be reading in hertz. We're at 10 again. With a moment to catch up. more account, one more cycle. One more gate period would be the appropriate way to say it. There we go. And let's uh, go to 9 hertz. All right, we got a partial gate period. Let's give it one more gate period. There's 
is 9 hertz. Let's take it to 5. Shortcut a few steps here. We know it's linear. Alright, that was a partial count. Let's give another full period. That little red dot you might see is the reflection of my uh, the light on the front of my camera in the lens bouncing back at us. 0 0.0050, so there's 5 hertz. Let's take it to 2 hertz and see what happens. Well, this is actually lower than the rated response. Two hertz. How about we do one? Give it another moment to count. Okay, we lost our count, so one hertz, it doesn't read. Let's go back to two. There's two hertz. So low end frequency response is somewhere between one and two hertz. The upper end is about a hundred kilohertz because you can't read higher than that, it goes overflow. 100 megahertz, excuse me, and it goes to overflow. So you have a 2 to 100 megahertz range, a rated range of 5 to 80 megahertz, high input impedance, brand new looks, in calibration, functioning beautifully. So let's go ahead and put it into period and see what we get. Okay, we're getting 99.99 roughly um, milliseconds for a period reading at uh, 10 hertz. So roughly 100 milliseconds at 10 hertz, which would be right. So 1,000 milliseconds would be a second. Uh, 10 times that, uh, or one tenth of that, would be uh, 100 milliseconds. And then if we go to uh, 30 hertz, we got 33 milliseconds. And if we go to 40, 25, 50 would be 20, 60 is 16, and then 100 hertz, and we're getting... 10 milliseconds. So the period's working, and then let's just take a look at the totalizer. Now we're just counting pulses and totalizing. That's also working. If we want to check all of the digits on our display, So I tell you, you can be very proud to have a beautiful instrument, uh, brand new looking, sitting on your, your desk, um, major manufacturer, fluke, um, and in, uh, for a pittance, compared to its original price, nothing. So it will come with uh, a set of uh, test leads. I will provide the... Um, most common type, which would be the gator clipped ends with the um, coax brand new set. And I'll also uh, provide a, uh, a manual with it. So you'll be able to uh, both use it and uh, keep it in calibration and have some information on service. So good luck and uh, happy bidding.